This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. In this video, we're gonna cover every single blend mode in Final Cut Pro. So the first blend mode, of course, is normal, and that is the default, and that just means that nothing is going to happen. So I have this gradient here that we'll be using throughout the video, and you can see it's completely opaque. So if I disable it, we can see our blender underneath. The next blend mode is the subtract blend mode. There aren't a ton of uses for this, but it does come in handy once in a while. The first use I could think of is it is actually the opposite of the add blend mode. Whereas the add blend mode makes things brighter, the subtract blend mode makes things darker. So typically with like a smoke asset like this, I would change the blend mode over to add and you would see the smoke in front of everything. However, if I wanted that smoke to appear black, I could change the blend mode over to subtract. So you'll notice with this particular asset, anything that is black is totally transparent. Anything that is white, the brighter the values get, actually darken the image. So looking here, we can actually see how the smoke asset is now a black smoke. So that can come in handy for some effects. And that is how you use the subtract blend mode. The next blend mode is the darken blend mode. I really like the darken blend mode. So I've applied this gradient here and I'm going to change it over to darken. Now what is great about darken is if there is a color value that is darker in the image below, that is gonna come through. So you can actually see with the handle of this blender, it almost looks like it is in front of our gradient because the color values are actually darker here than in the gradient. So this can be a really effective way of quickly adding text into a scene if you have a darker image like a silhouette or something without having to do any masking. So I really like the darken blend mode. The next blend mode on the list is multiply. So the multiply blend mode essentially takes anything that is completely white and makes that totally transparent whereas anything that is dark is going to be totally opaque. So you can actually see how it's coming in front of the handle now. It's not actually appearing to be behind. The multiply blend mode is essentially the opposite of the screen blend mode, which I will get into in a little bit, but I use it when I need to add in something like black smoke and it has a white background. So that is just one of many ways you might use the multiply blend mode. The next blend mode is the color burn blend mode. Now you'll see that in the dark areas of this gradient, it's actually also adding additional saturation to the image, whereas the lighter sections are barely affecting the image. So it can be a great way of adding in contrast. You can add in a lot of saturation with different color variations. It's a great way to get a very stylistic look in your videos. Now something to note with the color burn is that white areas actually will not affect the image at all. However, the next blend mode, which is linear burn, is affecting the brighter parts of the image. So that red is still bleeding through on the lighter parts. Also, if I show that gradient, we can see it's doing the same thing here with the darker and lighter parts of the image. The next blend modes are blend modes I use the most frequently. They are used for compositing in effects such as explosions and stuff like that. The first of which is the add blend mode. You can see how the dark parts of the image are totally transparent whereas the light parts of the image actually lighten up the scene. They are adding the color values making it a brighter image. If I were to apply this to the gradient here, you can see how much brighter it makes our image. And you could actually use this to make something like a sun flare or something along those lines, as well as applying it to stuff like muzzle flashes or things of that nature. When you just need a little bit of extra brightness to the effect that you're adding. Now the light in blend mode is actually the complete opposite of darken. So I've actually inverted the colors of the blender here and you can see how lighten is actually behind the edges of the brighter parts of the image. So anything that is brighter than the image with the lighten blend mode is going to appear in front of it. So that can be a really useful tool for adding text to a scene that has a brighter background. The next blend mode is screen. Screen is likely the most used for compositing. It's very similar to Add. However, rather than adding additional brightness to the scene, it's going to just nicely blend through. So looking here, we have the darkest parts of the image that are completely transparent and the lightest parts that are totally opaque. Everything in between is nicely blended. So let's say I wanted to bring in a lens flare from our sponsor Envato Elements. 
and I'll select the screen blend mode. So you'll see the dark areas are totally invisible where the light areas are nicely blended into the scene and it looks really, really natural. So that is one of the most effective ways to use screen. And there's a massive variety of ways you might actually use this blend mode. So that's probably your first go-to, but there's definitely a massive list of other blend modes as well. The next one is the color dodge. Now color dodge is the exact opposite of color burn. You'll notice that the black areas are totally transparent. The white areas are totally blended in, but you'll also notice how it adds saturation as the image gets brighter. So this can create a higher contrast image and you can definitely use this for different stylization options as well as other features. So if I set this gradient to color dodge, you'll see how vibrant the colors are because it's a very bright gradient. So everything is getting a lot more contrast, a lot more saturation to it. Whereas if I set it to something like screen, it's a lot more muted and faded. But as should be noted, the dark areas are going to be totally transparent and the brightest areas are gonna to be totally opaque. Linear dodge is exactly like color dodge, except for rather than bringing in the saturation and contrast in the brighter parts of the image, it's just going to nicely blend it. It's going to actually just lighten the image. So if I apply that to the gradient here, color dodge is very punchy and linear dodge is much more faded. The next blend modes are super useful for adding texture into your scene or for stylizing your image. But before we get into that, let's pay some bills. Have you ever wanted to create your passion project about the amazing life of a blender? But you lack the budget to go out and film hundreds of blenders? Well, lucky for you, Envato Elements has you covered. With their massive library of over 57 million assets, including stock videos, photos, fonts, music, sound effects, graphics, and so much more, you too can create the cinematic masterpiece of your dreams. Check out Envato Elements using the link in the description to start making your next masterpiece. Right back into it, the next blend mode is overlay. So the way overlay works is anything that is 50% gray is going to be totally transparent. Anything that is dark is going to blend in more darkly. Anything that is bright is going to blend in more brightly. It adds lightness and darkness to your image. You can see how the brighter part of the gradient is getting brighter, the darker part is getting darker. And so this is back and forth. You can see the differences. And then of course here, right in the middle gray section, nothing is being affected at all. Soft light is a more muted version of overlay. Again, I like to use these for textures. So I've added in this marble texture. So if I set this to overlay, you can see how punchy the texture is coming through here. If I set it to soft light, it's a little bit more subtle, but definitely does the job. So that just gives you a little bit of variance in how much the texture is coming through. Hard light is a stronger version of overlay. So you see now the texture is really coming through. It almost looks like we're looking through window glass or something along those lines. And again, anything 50% gray, like in this area, is going to be totally transparent. Anything that is brighter or darker is going to blend into the image. In playing with vivid light, it's just like overlay. However, think of it also as a combo of the color burn and color dodge effects. So it actually introduces more contrast and more saturation to the image depending on the color variations. So anything that is 50% gray is not gonna add any contrast or saturation. And then again, anything brighter or darker is going to add saturation and contrast. And linear light is just like vivid light, however, the colors are not being affected. And linear light is completely allowing the brightest areas to come through and the darkest areas to come through, and then the middle sections are blending nicely. Pin light is essentially a combo between lighten and darken. So you'll see how this handle down here in the darker areas is coming through and it almost appears like it is in front of our gradient. Whereas if we had a brighter section, so if I were to add the negative effect again, you'll see the brighter areas now are in front of the gradient. The hard mix blend mode is very interesting. It doesn't show through very well with a gradient, but if I apply this color to the top and I apply hard mix, you'll see how much contrastier our image is. That is because it is only allowing through eight different color values. So it allows through red, green, blue, and cyan, magenta, yellow, and then of course white and black. So that is going to give you this really punchy, comic booky looking image. And then if you want to soften that, you can bring down the opacity so that it's a softer version of that. 
These next blend modes are much more for utility rather than for stylization. The first one we'll look at is difference. Now the way difference works is anything that is the exact same color is going to be black. And then if you shift it, it's going to do mathematics to find the difference between the two color values and then apply a color accordingly. So you might be wondering what is the use for that? That is for definitely aligning up images. So I'm gonna push Shift T to get my transform tool here. And I have the exact same image right on top of each other. But let's say they're slightly off. Well, if I apply the difference effect, you can see, oh, these are off by this much very, very quickly. So you can just drag it back into place so that the image is totally black. It doesn't have a ton of use cases, but I was noticing you could make a really crazy music video effect or something by scaling up one image and then just certain parts of the images are gonna come through and it looks so crazy. But the main purpose of difference is to find out if things are misaligned. Now exclusion is exactly the same. However, rather than turning it black, it actually leaves out the middle values. So you can easily see if they're misaligned, just like with difference, however, there's more color to it. So if that's more pleasing to look at and easier to figure out, you can definitely use exclusion. The next blend modes are used a lot for compositing. So the first one we have here is stencil alpha. Now I have this circle here that has an alpha channel around it. So anywhere that the circle is not is of course going to be black. Now there's also stencil luma. So originally, let's say that this circle is blue, that does not change the stencil alpha. So it does not matter the color, it just matters if it has an alpha channel. But if I set this to stencil luma, you'll see how my image actually gets darker and that is because I have a dark blue color. So if this was actually totally black, everything would be totally canceled out. So you wanna definitely leave your stencil lumas as white if you want it to be fully transparent. Now silhouette alpha is the exact opposite of stencil alpha. You'll notice how everything within my circle is totally black. Everything outside is totally white. Whereas if we did silhouette luma, you'll notice how it's slightly transparent. And that is because my color is not perfectly white. Now these different stencils and silhouettes have a ton of uses. One use case I can think of off the top of my head is let's say I wanted to add in a title. Now I'll go into my video settings and change it over to stencil luma. Now we can see that this text is actually cutting out the background. So I could put this text here, have a different kind of background, sand dunes or something along those lines, and the text would be legible with the background behind it. Now, one super valuable tip to know is usually if you wanted to do something like this, I couldn't add another background behind this. So if I wanted this gradient to be underneath everything, you'll notice how that gradient isn't showing up at all because there's the other objects behind it. And maybe I want the gradient right here. So to fix that, we could actually drag this gradient up above, and that is where our next blend mode comes in, the behind blend mode, which I have an entire video on right here. So we're gonna change it over to behind. And so now you'll see that this gradient is showing up even though the text here is stenciling the layers underneath. And maybe a more visual demonstration is, let me add in this marble texture and we'll set it to behind. So that is a nice way, rather than having to put this text layer inside of a compound clip with option G, you can actually leave everything open in the timeline where it might be easier to edit. The last two blend modes are very much for utility only. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is the alpha add blend mode. A lot of the time with rotoscoping, you actually get these small seams that happen between masks. So to showcase that, so I have two circles here with a different mask. Now, if I were to zoom in here, you can see there's this slight seam where the inverted masks are. So that is where this blend mode comes in. I'm gonna select the top one and I'm going to select the alpha add blend mode. And you'll notice that that seam is totally gone. That is because it has a different algorithm for anti-aliasing, thus covering up that seam, making it a much cleaner cut. So it's definitely much more for a utility use case, but it is useful in some circumstances. The last blend mode, pre-multiplied mix, ties directly into alpha channels. So essentially what pre-multiplied mix does is it looks at footage that already has an alpha channel. So this tree is on its own alpha channel here. Now look very, very closely at the edges here. When I change it from normal and over to pre-multiplied mix, you'll notice that the edges almost get brighter. I'll zoom way in so we can really see this. So again, here is normal. 
and then I'll move it back to pre-multiplied mix. And you'll see how the edge lightens up. So basically pre-multiplied mix just improves how the alpha channel actually appears on screen. So if you're having some trouble getting your video to integrate well with the alpha channel, maybe try pre-multiplied mix. So that was every single blend mode in Final Cut Pro. I hope this was helpful to you. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you might also really like this tutorial about the differences between the hold frame and the freeze frame. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one.